Are you struggling to develop a personal improvisatory style or to find your unique compositional voice? Well, you're not alone. Many musicians grapple with these dilemmas. Perhaps my own story will help you unearth your path to musical originality. I started playing because I love the way music sounds, the way playing the horn feels, the exhilaration of working with a great band of like-minded musicians. A couple years later, I began writing songs just so we'd have original, original songs for gigs and recordings. I didn't think twice about trying to be original. On the contrary, <clears throat> emulating the masters was satisfying. It seemed to legitimize and validate my work. However, about 10 years into my career, I suddenly faced an existential crisis when nagging questions began keeping me awake at night. Is this composition any good? Is it too long? Which sections are valid and which need to be scrapped? Should that note be an B flat or an F sharp? Do my solos stink? What right do I even have to compose music or play the horn when there are so many musicians out there who are way better? Those doubts harassed and dogged my steps, so I quit music, went back to school, and earned a Master of Science degree. All those classes in math, chemistry, engineering, and computer programming asked questions which each had one and only one correct answer. That assuaged my soul. It satisfied the need for stability and comforted the insecure little kid inside me. I had sidestepped the constant existential uncertainty. I discovered solid ground on which to make choices. When I returned to music 10 years later, confidence in my ability to formulate split-second decisions had skyrocketed. That's a huge asset when you improvise. Spontaneity and faith in your intuition are absolutely essential to capture the magic moment of right now inspiration central to jazz improvising. As a composer, it's now much easier to isolate the specific note, rhythm, chord, or lyrical setting that's spoiling my work rather than throwing the whole piece in the fire. Here's an example of the what I call the blow till you know approach to improvisation and composition. Let me walk you through the development of a musical phrase which took several days for me to complete. But first, spend a moment reflecting on this quote I read this morning. Ask yourself if you, like me, need a new route to creative fulfillment. Here's the quote. Aesthetic passion is the enduring conviction that our curiosity matters. Believing we matter is essential to creating things that matter. Aesthetic passion is the natural inclination to grow, as if we were a plant stretching out new roots, looking for nutrients. About eight days ago, I was aimlessly blowing the tenor sax. When I say aimlessly blowing, I mean that I'm, I wasn't preparing for a specific gig or trying to learn a new song, but just rather just playing for the joy of playing. At some point, I stumbled on a phrase that caught my ear sufficiently to warrant jotting it down and trying it in all 12 keys. Here it is. The melodic shape felt satisfying, perhaps worthy of shedding in all 12 keys, so I tried to find a harmonic structure which was well tailored to fit that phrase. Here's what I came up with. After a while, the repetitive rhythmic pattern grew monotonous. So, plus, at a slow tempo, there's no place to breathe. You know, try playing the Bach cello suite slowly on a horn and you'll experience the same frustration. So I started exploring other rhythms and adding breathing opportunities. Here was my second stab at this lick. By 
By the way, notice that licks in most of my posts, like this one, end on the note of fourth above or of fifth below the first note. Uh, in this case, going from A down to D. That's to facilitate shedding in all 12 keys around the circle of fourths. By the time of this next variation, I had presented my idea to the band. That's band in a box. But they were, they were in a dire straits bag that day, so the chords got simplified and the groove changed to straight eighths, or dire straits. Here's that second lick. Note here that we're experimenting with a three-note pickup and a call-and-response pattern. Adding a note to the pickup puts every following note on the other side of the beat, which makes it more interesting and gives you more variety. Here's the final form of the phrase. Do you see the added syncopation in space? It's, more, it's got more rhythmic variation and two potentially useful bebop phrases in the bars with uh, the B-flat and A-flat chords. Here it is. If you'd like to try your hand at shedding this lick in all 12 keys, use the recording and chart whose link is included below this video. Do you see any advantage to what I call blow till you know approach to improvising? Like you, I've played through lots of method books by masters like Close, Niehaus, Oliver Nelson, Jerry Coker, etc. These books are excellent for building chops and such. And I also, of course, use transcription books by the masters which are great for learning uh, to emulate how they play. But this blow till you know method can open up an entirely new world of creative expression and bring you many gifts like these. Number one, it stimulates your imagination. Number two, it helps you get in touch with, develop, and refine your personal improvisatory and compositional style. Number three, even though the licks you invent may merely repeat cliches you've played for years, shedding them in all 12 keys will invariably introduce range and technique challenges on the frontier of your ability. Oh, and by the way, it's always nice to add a little coda at the end of the 12th key. I first came up with this one. It, but it was hard to play up to tempo, so I revised it like this. If you want to download the recording and or the chart, click on the link below the video. Please share your ideas in the comments section below, and thanks a lot for watching. Happy practicing. Hey.